Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines. We have a uh, Cirrus Craftsman tractor in here, uh, no start condition, does absolutely nothing at the key. And I wanted to show you what we found. And this is something that I've come across a few times lately. So I want to throw it out to all you guys. If you ever get on your tractor and you turn the key to crank and you have absolutely nothing, no click, no nothing, the first thing you want to do is check your fuse. All right, so we're going to open up the hood here. We're going to look at his fuse. The fuses are usually tucked away back in the wiring harness back in here, and this one actually has a clip. They usually clip them onto the frame somewhere. Uh, this is a Craftsman front engine tractor, and right about here is where you find it, but you want to check your fuse. The funny thing about this guy's fuse, when we pull it out, is that if you look, I don't know if you can see this or not, but it's actually, right here, it's melted. Right there is melted, and I don't know why that would be except for voltage creating a lot more voltage than it should than popping a fuse and also i saw inside here which i don't think you can see one of these is actually one of the connectors in there is actually uh, burnt too all right so we definitely know he's blown fuses the first thing you want to do is you want to check your battery for voltage and i'm going to do that with a test light all right so i'm going to hook up my test light and this will just tell me if the battery has voltage if i get a bright light there you go, very bright light. That means this guy's got a good battery. That's the first thing you wanna check to make sure you have voltage. The second thing is make sure your terminals, your cables are tight. A lot of people don't tighten them tight enough and you can have problems that way blowing fuses. All right, so we have a melted fuse here. Now, what I did find was in his, this is a, a lot of times I found this is that right here, we got a bad wire and a bad wire. And this is on his light circuit. This is for his headlamps. And what happened was they were touching. And I'm pretty sure that this is it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna snip these off. I'm gonna um, put some uh, solder butt connectors, which is really nice. I'm gonna show it to you on the table here in a second. But look for bad wiring on your headlamps. And I think it's from people either shutting the, shutting the hood on the wires or they're getting pinched. But I've seen this a few times. And then I'm also gonna, with the fuse holder over here, see actually it just popped out. This fuse holder, just right here, it just popped out of the, out of the uh, bottom of the fuse holder. This was starting to melt here, and I'm gonna put a new fuse holder, fuse holder on this too. So let's go over to the bench and I'll show you what we have. What you need, well, the test light I already showed you to check your battery. We're gonna use a high-powered heat gun to actually melt the solder connectors here this is a really cool this is called a soldering seal this is kind of making the uh, soldering iron obsolete but these connectors here i use a lot of these and they have a little teeny bit of solder in the center of it and then they have a little silicone on each end so you use a heat gun and you put your wires inside there and then you heat it up with a heat gun and it melts the solder and boom you have a solder connection it's really really nice you can buy these on amazon uh, i have i'm going to show a link below to uh on how i actually use these so you can see how to do it because i'm not going to show it to you on this video because this video is basically about the fuses going bad and then also we're going to put a new fuse holder in and you can get these fuse holders uh through any automotive store uh, so, so use that and then you have a pair of wire snippers and a pair of wire uh, strippers these are snippers and these are strippers this end here technically you can use these to uh, cut them off but Wire cutters actually work a little bit better. So let me get to it and uh, we'll be back at it and I'll show you the final product. Okay, so I'm back and I just wanted to show you that I did solder them together with those solder butt connectors, which is pretty good. Use the heat gun down here. And I took the headlight assembly off to repair that. All right, I used a couple different connectors out of here. Use the these come in handy a lot, the pink ones, because a lot of wires are small. And I use the blue on the little heavier gauged wire and it worked out really well. So I'll get it all back together again. I'll be right back. Okay, everybody. So I have it all soldered up here on the connectors. And also I wanted to show you, I did put heat shrink on here and you can, you can buy the heat shrink the same place you buy these solder butt connectors um, on Amazon or anywhere. Um, I also did the, the headlamp right here put a little heat shrink on it. It takes a couple times sometimes to get those solder um, connectors to work, but the heat gun's important as far as melting the inside of that 
a solder. This is the fuse that I put in. Now, I also want to show you guys that there is a way you can test the fuse. If you have a light tester here, you have two ends you can check. You can check on this, this end, and as long as your light lights up, all right, got, and then go to the other side, and it shows the light lights up, that means you have a good fuse. So as long as you check both sides. If you check one side and one side doesn't work, that means you have a bad fuse. And he had the wrong fuse in there. It was a 30 amp fuse. And I want to show you that if you go to your back to your tractor, on most tractors, the model number on the Craftsman's are in the back. So you're going to go to this and you're going to find the 917 dot. And it could be a couple different variations of this thing, but it's usually three digits a dot and then the rest of it. And then you're going to take that number and you're going to come over to your internet. And you're going to go to searsparts.com. Okay, so you can go to Sears Parts Direct. You put in the model number, 9172769, and you're gonna look up the electrical. So when you get to the electrical, you're gonna zoom in and you're gonna find the fuse, which is number 26, the fuse. You come over, go to number 26. It sh says that it's a 20 amp fuse, and you gotta make sure that you put in the right one. So we know it's a 20 amp fuse. I put in a 20 amp fuse, and technically we should be all done. All right, so all we gotta do is fire it up and we should be good to go. See if it works. Now I gotta take my tools out of the way here. Now we know it runs, but you're gonna have to get a little bit of time on it. I would run it around the yard, make sure you know, it doesn't blow. It, it, what, what's going to happen is you're going to come out to it and it's going to it's going to do absolutely nothing. Now this is starting like it should. So basically the problem has been corrected. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, give me a comment below. Appreciate everybody watching my videos. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.